It's Monday Night Sports Talk on the internetwork.net. Welcome in, everybody. It is Greg Banks live in the studio tonight, along with Chad States and Huntington via Skype. And we have also Dave Shannon via Skype. He's joining us, by the way, in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Welcome in, gentlemen. Get ready for an exciting evening of Monday Night Sports Talk on the airnetwork.net. How's everybody doing, Dave? How are you making out in Altoona? Uh, good. The snow is uh, melted. Finally, and, uh, yeah. You know, uh, still some on the ground, of course, but, uh, you know, uh, don't have to worry about the driveway anymore. Thank God for that. <laughs> hey, Chad, you all dug out by now? Because I know we got about 20 inches of snow in Huntington last week. All dug out, and it looks like it's down to about three because of the melting. So, oh, all man. good. It ought to be all gone by Friday, at least we hope so. Hey, we're getting ready for Super Bowl 50, so let's get right to it this evening, guys. You know, and, uh, you know, there's probably a lot being said about, uh, of course, the opponents this week, Carolinas taking on um, Denver Broncos. I, I think some of the uh, talk that I've been hearing, Chad, and you can join me on this real quick, uh, obviously, is this indeed Peyton Manning's? final rodeo and so if it is i mean he he's not giving us a clue one way or the other does it really matter no and i mean i i think we all know what what it's going to be it 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 has to be um you know his skills have deteriorated he can't throw the ball like he used to Mm -hmm. um you know he's he's to the point now where he's managing an offense he's not the offense so i i think this is his swan song and and why wouldn't you want to go out with a trip to the super bowl win or lose You're not. I mean, your chances of you making it back to this game again to retire out is is very slim. So I think yes, you are seeing the last of Peyton Manning in Super Bowl Fifty. All right, so vo- roll that video. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dave, you know, as as the talk really centers around Peyton and whether or not this is his last game, there is a game to be played, and there has been like about two weeks. You know, there's always that lull after the, um, of course the actual playoffs, and then the Super Bowl. Of course, they have the Pro Bowl in there. We'll talk about that. But um, do you feel like uh, this gives them the ability to get healed up and get ready to play this game? Well, absolutely. Uh, Any time off, I think any player would tell you, you know, if they get a little extra time to recuperate, uh, because uh, even before we went on the air, we were talking about something else with the NFL, and those guys appreciate every day they have to recover after they play a game. And I do mean recover, Mm -hmm. because their body goes through hell in every game. And uh, so you, you have that extra time. I'm sure they appreciate it. And uh, there's never a problem. Uh, there's no switch flipping that needs to take place. You know, uh, well, I got to turn it back on now and play one more game. Right. Uh, believe me, they're ready to go when uh, kickoff comes on Sunday. What was a movie that came out back in the 70s that really was indicative about how much pain these guys went through on Sundays only to be able to go the next Sunday uh, and they would uh, kind of sit in the the uh, cold ice baths, if Is that you will. North North Dallas Forty. That's what it was, Chad. That's what it was. I remember. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the people in that movie. Like uh, maybe Burt Reynolds was in it. I'm not sure if that. No, he was in the uh, prison movie. That's right. But I remember that movie distinctly, showing us how those guys would like really, you know, their noses would bleed the next morning when they woke up. And how many stories we've, we've heard about that. But I imagine, Chad, at, at almost 40 years old, uh, this has got to be probably a good R&R, at least for uh, Peyton Manning. Well, yeah. I mean, he can retire and do commercials for the rest of his life. <laughs> you know, sing, sing, sing the nationwide theme song forever, you know. Yeah. And do uh, do Papa John's commercials with uh, Joe Montana. Uh, his endorsements I mean, go up. He, he's got it. He's got it made. I mean, yeah. he's a he's a public darling. Yeah. Um, you know, he really can do no wrong, and that's proof of what he's just going through right now. Because, really, is anybody talking about him and this other ordeal that kind of went down a couple weeks ago? Exactly. No, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're not. Why? Because it's Peyton Manning for crying out loud. So. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going to be just fine. I, I actually think that uh, what I'm worried about or what I'm wondering about with Peyton is, is the competitive nature still going to be there? Yeah. What's he, is he going to go to the booth where I think he would be excellent? Or is he going to get into coaching because he's still got that competitive itch? What do you think, Dave? To see what he does. What do you what? You know, because I know there are rumors that he may go down and work with Jeff Fisher uh, or whoever is in. Who is down in Tennessee these days? Because that's kind of like the area he wants to go back to. Fisher went to St. Louis. Okay, so, 
Chances are he'll end up in uh, Nashville or down in the Titan area down in Tennessee because he's really loyal to UT. And I just don't see him maybe coaching college, but maybe he would perhaps uh, maybe uh, be an assistant coach for the Titans. What do you think? We have no idea what he and John Elway have talked about. That's true, and too. And I'll tell you what, uh, obviously there's uh, uh, there's going to be some kind of play there because mm-hmm. of the fact that uh, John Elway was the guy that uh, gave him that chance to get back in there and be in a Super Bowl again. Right. And uh, they're, they're guys that are painted with the same brush from the standpoint of, here they are, uh, and, uh, you know, you have two guys that, can really relate to each other and who knows what John may be able to offer him. And it may be something that you just can't walk away from. Yeah. Well, Chad touched on this briefly. He didn't really say anything about the AGH um, controversy in Al Jazeera. HGH. That re- HGH. Okay. Uh, HGH controversy and, and that Al Jazeera story. And I'm not sure, Dave, are they even in America anymore? Are they even on television anymore? Is there any credibility perhaps to even that story, because you know it's going to come out this week. I mean, people are going to at least make that a talking uh, point one way or the other. Yeah, it's going to be a talking point. Uh, as to Al Jazeera, they're selling that channel. I mean, Greg, if you want to go buy that, you know, I, I know you're a, <laughs> Not a broadcast maven when it comes to buying properties. I wish. So. <laughs> yeah, like a new plate, buy the, the AM. They wouldn't give me equipment. But anyhow, having said the that. The bottom line is they're gone. Right. And would you I, give I think, would you give TMZ more credibility had they broken the story seriously? No, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, I I just uh, TMZ is out there for the pop, and uh, it would take a lot of investigation for me to yeah. believe anything that they come out with. And you know, when I saw this, when this story fo- first broke, and uh, that I found out that it was broken by Al Jazeera, right. That immediately to me was it was like, what credibility does this have? Uh, uh, it has some credibility in the fact that there were HGH deliveries to yeah. Peyton Manning's wife. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I, you know, much beyond that, uh, I, you know, it's a hell of a leap to go from that point to, you know, these things are out there. People buy them, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it, it can uh, be for any number of reasons. And you know, uh, so we don't know what happened with that stuff afterward. Right. Monday night sports talk here on the Air Network .net. Glad to bring it to you. By the way, online or you can go to uh, Tune In Radio and just check out the Air Network. That's all you have to do. Uh, download that app free of charge. You can call us tonight, make a prediction, perhaps on the Super Bowl, or talk anything regarding sports at eight one. 4-2-4-2-4-8-4-5. Again, that number, 814-242-4845. Greg Banks in the studio, Dave Shannon, Altoona, and Chad States, by the way, in Huntington. Chad, having said that, we talked a little bit about that thing uh, with, Ch- uh, with um, Cam Newton last week, you know, and how people perceive him. And then I believe it was like the next day on Tuesday, he actually went on television, and I don't know if I misconstrued what he was saying, but perhaps... What he was trying to say was, yes, I am an African-American quarterback. Um, and then he went on to say, you've never seen anything like me before. Does that hold any validity? Or did we see people like him before in maybe Warren Moon? Maybe it was Doug Williams, perhaps even uh, Donovan McNabb. I mean, what was Cam really, what was his intent? On it, and what was he trying to get across? That he is the best quarterback well at least i don't want to say he's the best black quarterback just ever, happens to be african-american he, maybe he, or? he does he's he's right though the nfl has not seen anything like him he's as big as ben roethlisberger oh yeah he can move like aaron Rodgers, and he can throw the ball like tom brady yeah when's the nfl ever seen anything like him at all plus his leadership skills are off the charts yeah uh, you know this guy gets it and and he's okay to me when you're playing at that level, when you're able to to command your troops at that level, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he deserves to brag away, and people are reading that completely wrong. Yeah, as far what, as I'm concerned, what do you think the perception right. is that he, you know that he's in thug mode, or there's probably a generation of people that truly understand what the guy's talking about? Yeah, I mean, or or they just haven't followed him enough to know that this is what he brings to the table. He he's, is yeah. just that good, folks. Mm-hmm. And, and you better appreciate it because 
you're not going to see something like this happen for a long, long time. He is the combination of speed, um, you know, size yeah. and skill that you don't see that often. And he's got all three of them. But let me so, ask you this. You know, uh, conversely, though, Chad and then Dave, RG3, was he not heralded as one of those up-and-coming quarterbacks that had the speed, perhaps the size, and the uh, athleticism? Um, but, or he just fell but short, there, though? There's, there's the difference. Almost all of those types of quarterbacks yeah. fizzle out. Okay. Cam Newton didn't. Yeah. That's why you're saying you ain't seen nothing like me because <laughs> nothing like him has been able to have success yeah. in the National Football League. It, yeah, I find it interesting, Dave. And I watched some of the film on this guy recently. He's one of the guys that stays in the pocket for a pretty damn long time. I mean, uh, yeah, that's God be, bless good offensive line. That's what I was going to say. That has to be attributed to that line. You know what I mean? Oh, no doubt about it. Uh, but that being said, he still has the ability. Uh, the, if the he one has thing to run. That, it's one thing to have the time, but then it's quite another to be able to do something with it after you get that much time. Right. And I, I was never more in absolute shock and disbelief when I was watching the championship game against the Cardinals, and he looked off four receivers oh, to throw yeah. to the fifth guy. I mean, that's uh, that's a guy that knows where his receivers are in the pattern, yeah. knows where he can go, and then goes there. And yeah. so from that standpoint, you know, it, it may seem a little bit brash to people. Uh, you know, there's always a uh, somewhat of a revulsion by people to other people that want to brag about themselves. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, he, but Chad makes the ultimate point. The guy is what he says he is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so maybe he doesn't express that in a way that you like, but mm. you, when you sit down and consider who he is and what he does, uh, you know, some of that stuff he says is pretty much right on. So it, it may not be presented to you in a way you want it to be or the right. way you like it to be. Uh-huh. But that's who he is, and, you know, as Chad says, he has the right to say that. He's definitely a unique person. Having said that, Chad, you know, as I look back on his history, first of all, he went to junior college, if I'm not mistaken. They won a, excuse me, national championship there. He then went over to Auburn, where, you know, there was a little controversy on whether or not he got paid or what happened there. And I guess we'll talk about that at some given time, about people that do get paid because I don't know about you guys, but I know people get paid in some way. Maybe their families or they get cars or somehow you deliver the goods to these players and get them at these universities. But he backed it up by winning a championship at Auburn. I don't know. The guy's a winner, man. I mean, it's just in his DNA. And I don't think people like that. Tough. I mean, you know, <laughs> success Success sometimes comes with a price, but tough. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's, he's setting himself up to be the first guy um, in the history of football, so to speak, to win a college national championship. Oh, man, yeah. To win the Heisman Trophy yeah. and the Super Bowl. That's never been done before. And it, it he, almost, has, set him, he yeah. has set himself up to do that. And mm. listen, you know, it, it, it's, it's no, you know, successful people are successful for a reason. And, yeah. and they know it. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with sharing that success, but it doesn't mean that just everybody can go out and do what he's doing mm -hmm. because I'll, you can't. I'll ask you and Dave and be quite honest with me. Um, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers makes a touchdown. I mean, the guy's getting paid for it now, but remember he did the uh, belt thing, you know, after he would have a touchdown. So obviously that was his celebration. Uh, conversely, Tom Brady would kind of like do the shooting motion towards the sky. That might be his uh, celebration. Cam has kind of a unique celebration. I think people forget that because um, I just re heard this recently, uh, and I'll give you guys this. He is too extravagant. He celebrates too much after every play. He's having too much fun, and his teammates are having too much fun. He's got an unmarried girlfriend that has a baby. And um, I don't know, man. And they seem to down him for that. Although, didn't we forget somewhere her day? Didn't Tom Brady have like a girlfriend that had a baby and then she left him or something? Then he married a model. Uh, I, you know, I very is, is seldom it a morality delve thing? into that. That's TMZ <laughs> stuff. Yeah, okay. And I very seldom delve into that. But you in understand the end, when they make those correlations, I'm like, okay, so what are you telling me? Yeah, I mean, in the end, it's you know, what can the guy do? And ultimately, okay, the, at some point, 
after you decide your career is over, which I can't believe that Megatron's going to you know, walk away. We'll talk but, about that, too. Yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that later. But huh? in the end, when you do retire and people consider you for the Hall of Fame, it's about what you did. It wasn't whether you had, you know, illegitimate children. Right. It wasn't about anything else, uh, how you celebrated after a play. It's nothing about that. Okay. It's what you did on the field. And so that's what's important. His, yeah. yeah, his body of work on the field is what matters. All right, listen, Super Bowl 50 is coming up. I'll get you guys uh, – we'll reiterate what your predictions were last week. For those of you just tuning in to the airnetwork.net, Monday Night Sports Talk, Dave Shannon in Altoona. We got Chad States in Huntington. Uh, Jimmy Ty used to join us weekly, but Jimmy couldn't make it because he's working, and he really wanted to talk to us tonight and give us a prediction, guys. So we got him up on Skype actually – uh, before the show, and Jimmy gives his prediction. He first of all wants to say hi, but here's Jimmy's prediction. And we'll see if we can bring him up uh, here. Carolina Panthers get ready to take on Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. Jimmy, how you been doing, first of all? I've been hanging, man. I've yeah. been, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, you're working a lot of hours these days, so uh, yeah. staying busy, making that money. And But, of course, are you going to, first of all, be able to even watch the Super Bowl, or are you working? I will not be able to watch the Super Bowl since I have to work. Oh, but we sucks. might have it on. We might have it on. I'll catch it. Do you guys feel bad for Jimmy already? It, but here <laughs> yeah. and there, but yeah. I really can't sit down and really pay attention to it like I did previous years. Yeah, are you going to be able to DVR it maybe and watch it later or anything like that? Nah. Hmm. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll if anything, I'll, if anything, I'll watch like the highlights on on Sports Center. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you'll that, you'll so. see all that stuff. So, yeah. hey, anyhow, let's get to the crux of the question tonight. As we're talking about the Super Bowl coming up on Sunday, and of course, uh, I think this might be. Uh, do you think it's Peyton Manning's final rodeo, whether he wins or loses? First of all, you think this is it for him? With this injury that he had this year, what was with the foot? I believe it was. And yeah. And all that. Yeah, I think it, it, it's going to be his last rodeo. And I would like to see Peyton come out on top, the sheriff come out on top. Right. Uh, you know, just like what Jerome Bettis did. Mm. And just like John Elway, you know, last rodeo, yeah. win the Super Bowl right off in the sunset. So oh, Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Cam Newton, man, you know, and Carolina has a really powerful offense. And obviously both squads have um, dynamic defenses. How do you really think this is going to play out? Because, you know, we talked about Cam, and, of course, um, on Sports Talk every week, we talk about how he'll probably be the MVP of the league this year. Uh, yeah. How do you think they match up, first of all? It's a good defense against a good offense. Denver has the number one defense in the NFL. Uh, Carolina has, I believe, the number one offense in the NFL. But, like they say, defense wins championships. So mm -hmm. I'm looking at Denver right now. Uh, do you have a player on Denver? Uh by the name of Demarcus Ware, who really wants to be in this game, who played like what is it, eight or nine seasons in the NFL and never been to the Super Bowl, he's he's ready. And if you get pressure on Cam Newton, I think that's the key. And the Denver in the Denver's defense is able to do that. Just look like they did to Tom Brady. They kept on getting pressure on Tom Brady. So I see Denver the whole way. Um, the only thing I can see that is that that could stop Denver's defense is Carolina's running game with Jonathan Stewart. Well, let's take a look at uh, Carolina defense against Peyton Manning. You think uh, they're, they're actually going to be out to put a lot of pressure on him, too? And these guys run uh, crazy back there. But you have a player by the name of Thomas Davis who has a broken arm, who's not going to be up 100%, and he's, he's one of their main pass mm. rushers. And he's going to be in there this weekend he's for sure be with in broken there, arm. But as long as Peyton throws short little dink passes, bubble screens... Uh, five, six yards completions. Yeah. And just keep the ball down moving. You're good because the Carolina uh, secondary with Josh Norman is excellent. Okay. And you know Josh Norman's going to be up against Demarius Thomas, uh, his number one receiver. So a player to keep an eye on is Emmanuel Sanders mm -hmm. and uh, the tight end, uh, Owen Daniels. They're, they're the two players I can say to keep an eye on in the passing game. Jimmy Ty on Skype uh, on Monday Night Sports Talk. We got a chance to talk to him before the show because he's working, but. Having said that, out of Hamburg, Pennsylvania, again, um, I know you're kind of uh, kind of leaning towards Denver, but give us your prediction and maybe even a score because the rest of the guys will at some given time during the show. My prediction would be Denver's going to win the Super Bowl. Uh, the final score, 
Denver Broncos, let's say 35, Carolina Panthers, 24. Even though the odds makers have uh, Carolina as a favorite by seven, huh? Yeah. And the MVP will be Peyton Manning since it's his last hurrah. Hmm. And Denver's going to rally for Peyton because they know this is his day. They know this is his last game. And they want him to go out on top as a champion. So, And Cam Newton has many, many opportunities <laughs> to play in the Super Bowl. He's still young. Okay. Jimmy Ty from Hamburg. Hey, say hi to the rest of the guys, Jimmy. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hey, listen. I miss you guys. I yeah. miss you guys. You hey, guys miss, miss Jimmy, too, too listen, don't you guys? <laughs> you know, Jimmy always has insight, doesn't he, Chad? I mean, he, he comes up with names of players and injuries. And um, uh, I guess my question would be to you, Chad, first, and then Dave. Does that sound like a sentimental thing for Jimmy? He wants to see Peyton win this thing. Well, because it's probably going to be his last Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, there, there is. I mean, it, it, it's a sentimental moment if he does do it. It was the same way with his boss. Yeah. You know, when John Elway <laughs> won his first and actually won another one after that. But right. he retired after winning his second Super Bowl. So, you know, that that, that happens. Jerome Bettis, we witnessed that. Yeah, um, yeah that's in true. Detroit, in Detroit, yeah, in Super yeah. Bowl. 40. His hometown. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it does pull at your, you know, it does tug at your heart Heart strings strings. a little bit. But, yeah. But uh, at some point in time, I think your mind has to get to really the nuts and bolts off of this. And, and Carolina is 16-1 and one for a reason oh, yeah. because of that damn good. Yeah. Dave, so, you, you, you have know, to say, and I didn't mean to cut you off. Chad, go ahead and finish up. I was going to say, they're, they're just Carolina is that good. So, yeah. you know, it, it, the, the bottom line is we've seen Denver go up and down. I mean, yeah. they were within a whisker of not even making the playoffs. Oh, let's yeah. not forget. Yeah. There were some losses and some shakeups that got them vaulted to the number one spot, but yeah. it was close there in week 17 of them maybe not making a playoff, so to speak. So mm-hmm. um, I, I, I just think that there's some sentiment there, but Carolina is so good. That's what I'm thinking. Dave, you have the same feeling. I mean, do you really probably feel, because, you know, we've been around a long time, uh, sentimentality kind of, plays into this thing for the Super Bowl, which probably is not going to be one of the most watched Super Bowls in America's history. I mean, first of all, but you kind of agree with Jimmy, not on the prediction, but it's sort of a sentimental pick. Oh, I I think Jimmy's uh, picking with his heart. And, uh, you know, what Chad said, there's nuts and bolts involved here. And uh, none of those nuts and bolts would lead me to believe that Denver is able to do that. Uh, okay. No matter how sentimental you want to be, yeah, it'd be a great story. Yeah, but uh, you know, I just like to see Peyton go away, go away, but he won't. <laughs> you yeah. know, so we're going to see him doing, like you said, Papa John's and nationwide commercials from oh, now to eternity God. until they figure he's not worth, you know, having yeah. on as a spokesperson anymore. Yeah, because you know, it's one of those things that that fifteen minutes or fifteen seconds, whatever it is, of fame. That's fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah, your fifteen minutes of fame can fade in a hurry and yeah. probably in about three or four years they'll be saying Peyton who well if this H.E.H. thing comes out I mean just say it would uh, his his history it's probably his whole social life is over uh, not only his professional life but having said that I think he has money in the <laughs> bank though Greg. I, I, I think you're right <laughs> but he could be like another Lance Armstrong well, and, and he he's also be... got an extra pair of crawfish shorts that he's going to send to Dave so oh is that what it is <laughs> <laughs> but listen Chad let me ask you now not that you're company has a a poll of any kind or anybody does any kind of betting on games um but have you ever known anybody to play those kind of like little uh polls this time of year where okay well the national anthem will last this long and and the um oh uh the first uh 50 yard line uh uh will be done here and blah 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 i mean do you play any of those kind of betting lines at all Thankfully, no, because that's ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, listen, no. we have another alum from. I mean, if, uh, you're, if you're doing, if you're, if you're playing that type of stuff, yeah. your last name is Rose. Yeah, you know, how about you, that. You've got a problem. Peter. <laughs> you know, you've got crazy. a problem. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I just wanted to let you guys know, we have another alum from, uh, of course, our uh, sports talk show, actually on the phone right now. Let's see if we can bring him in. Jeff, can you hear me? We have a. Uh, I'm here. There he is. Jeff's back. He's on the hey, air with us. Going? Hey. Hey. All right. They say great, Jeff. By the way, Jeff, let me uh, just kind of ask you because Jimmy was just on via Skype. 
uh, from something we recorded earlier, getting predictions on the Super Bowl and your feeling on how this game is going to turn out and why you think it will turn out the way it will. Well, my, my sentimental, of course, uh, has to go with the Colts just because, boy, it'd be another, uh, another Jerome Bettis uh, situation, maybe walking into the, uh, into the limelight on a win, but, uh, the Broncos, I don't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, but, and you know, and, and the smart bet tells you defense wins the uh, games, but, uh, especially big games like this one. And the Colts certainly have the defense to it, but I'll tell you, Cam is just, uh, oh. just an exciting player, just at, a, at another level. I mean, he, he's all one of the greatest uh, quarterbacks ever, but I'll tell you, he does some pretty special things that no one's ever done before. Oh, he certainly is unique. Hey, and it's funny that you mentioned the coach, because I never thought about this, Dave and Chad. You know, Peyton played for the coach for many years. Yeah. Coach are baby horses. And then when you grow up, you get to be a Bronco. Wow. <laughs> I never even thought of that. Did anybody else think of that? No. But Broncos <laughs> also get put out to pasture. Hey, did you hear that, Jeff? Dun, dun, dun. Broncos yeah. also so, get put so out to pasture. So let's not forget about yeah. that. And, and you can see a thoroughbred being nice. put out to pasture on Sunday. Well, and, I guess they could They could put out the stud, too. <laughs> that's true, too. Ooh. Yeah, you got to remember that's, that's, that's what, what they the do. That's what the HGH is for, guys. That's <laughs> the HGH. <laughs> they, they didn't do that with me when I retired. Oh, listen, man, we're not even going to go there. <laughs> you're, not, you're not really retired yet. You're just playing retired. <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, now. Now I'm not working. I'm back in radio. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> hey, listen, let me ask you this real quick. How's that working out for you? And uh, I know, are you getting to the games, the basketball games? Because I know you uh, like to I, get to those. Uh, I'm here right now. We just tipped off St. Joe's and the Bearcats. Uh, are, uh, okay. Just, just underway in the first period. And uh, so far, it's been a clean sweep all day. Both uh, both Huntington Junior High teams won the JV, so put up about a 20-point victory. And wow. right now the Cats are out to a 9-4 lead with uh, 4.56 in the first period. Well, fantastic, man. Hey, listen, we appreciate you calling in the show tonight. You are at Now, let me ask you this truly, though. Do you have a score uh, in this game between the Panthers and I, the Broncos? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, Cam and the boys at uh, 31, Broncos 21. Okay, 31-21. We're marking you down on that, Jeff. <laughs> there we go. All Place right. your bets. Hey, all right, man. Thanks for calling in. Okay, hey, take care, guys. All right, thank you, man. We miss you. By the yeah. way, when next season's over, make sure you're back on with us. Okay, all we right, will thank do you. that. We appreciate yeah. it. Thanks again. Jeff's back, by the way, on the line tonight, 242-4845. That's 814-242-4845. We'd love to hear from you as well. So if you have a prediction this evening... Dave, I, I wanted to ask you this. Ron Rodriguez, um, the coach of the Panthers, right? I think he's been through this before, if I'm not Ron mistaken. Rivera. Rivera. What I call him. See, there you go. I'm thinking Rodriguez Rivera because I'm thinking Donald Trump. I'm sorry, Ron. Oh, <laughs> okay, my. that's a different show for a different oh, night. My. Okay. <laughs> But let me ask Trump's you. I'm going to wonder if you're from America, you keep up this. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, saying. Really. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry. I had a brain fart for a second here on Sports Talk. Okay, got away. But anyhow, Rivera. I mean, he was kind of a, he was on a team that had fun. You think like he sort of like validates uh, this whole Panther um, sort of like euphoria that's going on because he allows it, he allows them to have fun. Oh, I, I think, you know, the, the way the, the head coach, if he, if he happens to have been a player over the course of time, that he right. is going to go ahead, you know, if that's the way he, you know, conducted himself and the kind of team he was on, he's going to endorse that yeah. because it's such a short time. We talked about this, you know, I think last week about the, you know, what, yeah. what's your lifespan in the NFL, and it's three years if you average everybody out. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's so short. And if you can have fun for that period of time and make whatever money you can make and sock that away so that you have it and maybe you don't have to worry about, you know, doing anything, although most guys do. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like have fun while it's there. You're not young forever. You're not in the NFL for an overly extended period of time. You know, there are exceptions to the rules mm -hmm. like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady now. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, enjoy it while it's there. You're not young forever. And I think Ron 
you know, uh, it, it works for them. It's working for them as a team. And I, I, I think we often forget that. They, that this actually, this league is made up. What would be the average age, Chad, would you say? Uh, we realize we have some older players like Ben would be considered older, Brady, and also now Peyton. But what is the average age of these people in the NFL? I can't imagine it being more than 23, 24, maybe. Yeah, I would say 25 at the highest. Yeah. And so, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, you figure running backs have like a, a three to four year lifespan on average. Right. You know, th- there's a bunch of guys that are going in and out of the league that we never even see. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I, I would say you're probably around 24, 25 years old. All yep. right. Enjoy it while it's there. Yeah. It's not there long. Because it's over quickly. I mean, quicker than you'd like to think. Let me do one more thing here, guys. If I can uh, just get you to hi- hang out with me for another second here. We had a young lady who was a Pittsburgh Steeler fan uh last night actually earlier this afternoon she wanted to get on sports talk but she had to work she's also taking chemotherapy and she really wanted to get her prediction on the air so if you give me a second can i run this and then i'll get your predictions yeah sure no problem this is thelma who was originally from the huntingdon area she moved to actually florida i just want to kind of give you the backstory about five years ago with ms That was the disease she was battling in Huntingdon. She moved to Florida to be with her daughters in warmer climates, and she got a lot better being in that environment. And then got the bad news that she was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, probably last year, about this time. But she's fighting through it, and she's letting us know that she's certainly uh, prideful of the um, and proud of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you'll hear her mention how she rocks with the Steelers in Florida there. And her production, um, her actually prediction that she has on this upcoming game on Sunday. And let me make sure I have the right buttons pushed here. Here we go. We'll see if we can do it this way. You had to rub, you had to rub it in, didn't you? Because, you know, here in Pennsylvania, yeah, here in Pennsylvania, we're not getting the best of weather. Can you guys hear that? what happens in winter, and that's why you actually yeah, moved to okay. Florida to get that better weather. But uh, oh yeah. Hey, having said that, you're a big Steeler fan, like we are all Steeler fans on Monday Night Sports Talk, and so we're talking with people throughout the country. Hopefully, this evening on this edition of Sports Talk about their Super Bowl predictions. Now, I know that Denver put us out, as it were, but you and I had discussed this. That you know, actually, the Steelers were lucky to actually get by the Bengals, even to face the Denver Broncos. But having said that. Do you have any uh, kind of a prediction in this upcoming game Sunday between the Carolina Panthers and Denver Broncos? Yes, I do. Okay. And I have an opinion, too. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take the – you give me the opinion, and then we'll go with the prediction. What's your opinion? Okay, my opinion is we got Cam Newton, North Carolina. Right. One of the best quarterbacks out there. Mm-hmm. And he's going to bring it. Well, you got Peyton Manning, who is one of the most prolific uh, quarterbacks ever playing for Denver. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, and go ahead. he's 40 years old. You know, it's time for him to get out of the game. You know, but he still has a tremendous amount of respect for me for what him and the Manning family right. have done for football. Okay. So... It's saying that my prediction is going to be Broncos. Oh, you're going to go with the Broncos instead of the Panthers, even though Cam's your man. I have to go with Broncos, man. I want to see Manning with one more ring before he goes out. He deserves it. Oh, man. You know, Jimmy just said that earlier on Skype that uh, sentimentally he wants to see Peyton Manning go out you know, a hero. So um, I don't know. The rest of the guys here don't necessarily agree with you, but I mean, we'll, we'll understand why you made that prediction. Now, can you give me like a score? Is it going to be close or do you have a score in mind? I think there's going to be a 14 point deficit in between the scores. Mm. I think there will be at least a two touchdown. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even like I was telling Jimmy, I said the bookmakers in Vegas now, because we're only uh, six days away from Super Bowl 50, bookmakers are giving Carolina seven points right off the bat. Yep. And you're saying the 
Yeah, and you're saying the Broncos are going to win this by 14. Well, let yeah. me dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. I actually think, I think, that, uh, I really think that uh, North Carolina is going to win, but it's my hope yeah. that the Broncos would take it. I would like to see the Broncos take it, but yeah. in all honesty, yes, uh, the or, uh, yes. I really think the Panthers are going to take it. All right, Thelma. Well, you know what? I'm not going to hold you to it. I know it's a sentimental pick on your part, just like it was on Jimmy's part. But we'll see how it all works out. I guess you will be watching the uh, Super Bowl down there in Florida, won't you? Yeah, of course. Okay. Are you going to do a party or anything like that? Uh, Probably not, because my children think that (laughs) a... Well, uh, a touchdown is a goal. Oh, okay. They don't understand so, the game. <laughs> no, they oh. don't follow football. And here I am every day in Steeler gear, yep. repping my team. Even now, today, yep. I got my Steeler gear on repping. Well, let me ask you this, because you're down in that Florida area where a lot of people go in the wintertime, and especially since you've been down there a couple of years, few years, have you run into a lot of Steeler fans down that way? I've run into more Steeler fans than Miami Dolphin and um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers fans. Really? There are bars down here that are just dedicated to nothing but Pittsburgh fans. Well, that's cool. Then you don't feel out of place being down there then. Oh, no. I think I feel more in place. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. I do. The other day, I have to tell you... I was going into chemo, uh-huh. and you know me, I, I'm repping my Steeler the whole way through chemo. Right. And this guy looks at me and says, hey, you're out for the season. And I looked at him, I said, yeah, I said, but we still have six rings, asshole. <laughs> you know? And that was just my how I put it to him, you know? And I'm that's still okay. repping the best. <laughs> And you yeah, are. <laughs> yeah. And well, we appreciate you rocking the black and gold all the way down in Florida. We know uh, for a fact there are a lot of transplants down there that are Steeler fans, and Steeler fans do travel. But anyhow, thanks for your prediction on Super Bowl 50. We hope it comes true. I hope so too. Thank you very much, Steve. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Always, <laughs> Thelma. Thank you very much, dear. Uh, Monday Night Sports Talk on the airnetwork.net. Greg Banks in the studio, Dave Shannon, Altoona, and we have Chad States hunting. And hey, did you guys get the impression that Thelma is a tough broad? <laughs> like, uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. By what she said to the guy when she was going in for, <laughs> yeah, how about but that? We have six rings, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, how, yeah. <laughs> How many people would, like, rebuke to that or rebuke that uh, statement? I wonder if she showed him one of the fingers where one of the other rings goes. Too. She might show him two of them because you can put a ring on the other hand, yeah, so it's I, hard to tell. I can imagine she probably did walking away from the yeah. guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yeah, defiantly. But anyhow, that's Thelma, originally from Huntington. Let's get to it. Your predictions from Dave and from uh, Chad tonight as we have a little fun on Monday Night Sports Talk. We've had folks calling in, and we've talked to a couple of people. You guys alluded to your picks last week. Here it is, coming up Sunday, Super Bowl 50. Don't get sentimental on me, dudes. Okay, I'll let you go first, Chad, and then Dave. Well, you, you know, all along I have been saying, I, you know, and, and you've heard me talk up Carolina, and I'm not going to sway away from that. I think Carolina is 16-1 and one for a reason. Um, you know, you often hear, and, and, and we've heard this throughout the evening, Defense wins championships, and, and I agree with that theory. But let's not forget that Carolina's defense is ranked sixth in the league, mm, yeah. so it's pretty darn good, too. You, you know, it, it's it's like those 49ers teams, and I'm not comparing Carolina to, to that Joe Montana stuff. But right. It, uh, oftentimes people forgot that San Francisco had one hell of a defense there, too. Mm, you yeah. know, they stopped Dan Marino. They stopped John Elway. Who they, they have a, who they have a safety back in those days? I'm trying uh, to remember. I some, some – <laughs> has been named Ronnie Lott. How about I mean, that? Just, he just wasn't, you know. It, it, but, but Carolina's defense is loaded. Luke Keekley is a great linebacker. Right. Josh Norman is a great cornerback. So not only are they getting it done on the offensive side of the ball, they're getting it done on defense and Ted Ginn and special teams. So they're oh, the complete yeah. package. And, and I really think that they're going to show their true colors. They got the um, weapons. And I'm going to predict, and, and it, we'll bet on this later, that 
uh, Peyton Manning is going to throw two interceptions. So I, I think Denver's going to turn over the ball. Mm-hmm. I think Carolina is going to win. I don't think they're going to put up 30 points. Right. But I will give them, you know, a, a 27 to, I, I'm going to say, 17 score here and, and cover that spread. Okay. If we heard it from Chad States. He's going with the Carolina Panthers. Dave, what are you feeling, man? Panthers, 31-24. Enough and said. here's a scenario that's going to play out. It's going to be the end of the game, and Denver is going to have the ball, right. and they're going to be going, you know, here's John Elway on his classic final drive. <laughs> and it's not going to happen. Yeah. But it's going to play out. It's going to be tremendous theater. Uh, 31-24 will be the final, and the Carolina Panthers walk away with the Lombardi Trophy. Let me ask you guys this. This is on CBS. Who would be the announcers for that game then? Nance and Sims. Okay. <laughs> Do we like them? <laughs> they have their moments. Okay, they, because they, there are some Phil people Sims, we just don't like, man. Phil Sims at times um, is uh, uh, too much of a know-it-all yeah. kind of guy. Uh, and, and I think there's any number of former players that are in that, you know, know-it-all category. Right. Uh, you know, I, I think Chris Collinsworth is, uh, oh, you yeah. know, I, uh, Collinsworth has been that way from day one, although he's a little more palatable now right. for whatever reason. Maybe I just got used to him Okay. Uh, with him and Al Michaels doing the games. But, uh, yeah, I mean. You know, uh, and Jim Nance has been around every major championship you can think of except the World Series. Yeah. You know, he does the, you know, uh, they'll go down and they'll be at the Masters and Jim will be the guy down there. And he'll be the guy in the, uh, you know, in the big tournament, uh, the NCAA basketball tournament. You know, he'll do the championship game as March Madness draws to an end. And so uh, he's been around that. So, you know, uh, I, I was surprised there were a couple of things in the last uh, in that uh, Broncos telecast that he did that were uncharacteristic mm-hmm. for him that he miscalled a couple of things. And Lord knows I, I do play by play and not nearly as well as Jim Nance does. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are there are times for whatever reason you're distracted and uh, maybe maybe you allow yourself to be distracted because you try to take in too much information. You right. want to sound too good yeah. on the air, and it gets in the way. Well, t- uh, TV so I did hear him like make good. a couple of mistakes. So yeah. outside of Phil Sims, I'm good with that. Hey, Dave, I said, Chad, is there anybody, like, if you could actually have them do the commentary on the Super Bowl that you would be uh, kind of uh, comfortable with? I mean, is there any announcers out there that you've heard or seen? Well, 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 to me, put Troy Aikman in the booth any day of the week. Really, Troy does a oh, he does an app. To me, he does a great job. Yeah, um, an ex an ex I, I would player like to, that's not really one of those oh, know it all no, guys. He is he is tremendous. Yeah, um, you put him. You know, I, I would actually like to see Al Michaels. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, get this, yeah, Al yeah. Michaels, Troy Aikman, and as your third guy, put Ron Jaworski in there. Or Ooh, you know, let's see what jealous. he brings to the table. Just for a little color. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but uh, I, I think that uh, Aikman just does such a great job. I just love <laughs> listening to him and, and what he brings to the table whenever he does a game. And, you know, and it makes it really nice whenever they let the pictures unfold, especially in celebrations and stuff, because we're watching it on TV now. If you're blind, that could be a problem. But then again, <laughs> so a friend of mine says, well, that's why they have closed captioning. <laughs> And I'm like, no. No, that's not why they have clothes. It's the other thing. It's the other one of the senses that goes bad that you need clothes captioning for. So I had to laugh and I said, I'm not, no, that's not what it's for, man. Okay, listen, <laughs> let me ask you this question. All time favorite teams. Chad, the reason I bring that up for the Super Bowl now, all time favorite teams, you sent us a list of these, this. You know, organized, and it was very well organized, um, you know, graphics and, of course, brackets of all these teams. What did you come up with? Because we haven't talked to you since last Monday night on Sports Talk. Who do you figure now would be the all-time favorite team out of those brackets that you sent us? 
Well, and it, and it wasn't what I figured out. Obviously, CBS Sports put that out. And okay. They ran it through their Stratomatic program, mm-hmm. and they came up with the 1985 Bears. Bears, see, and I was thinking the Bears, 85, and the 85 and, Bears, and, thank you. And, it, and it's hard to argue. I, yeah. I mean, when you look at that team from top to bottom, I, I mean, it's really hard to argue, you know, with who they had on there, right. that, that there was a team any better. And, yeah. and, you know, and then you start to think, all right, CBS is going to put this team out. Is there anyone that could crack that code? Oh, and, yeah. and that's and that's the three four defense with the way Chicago played it. Yeah. And there's only one team that comes to mind that could crack that code. Yeah. And it's the team that won the year before, mm. and it's the eighty four forty niners. Yeah. You, you, you know when when you start to look at, at at how Bill Walsh was able to orchestrate an offense, and this is an offense without Jerry Rice. Yeah. You know, to me, I think the eighty four forty niners were the most complete football team, mm-hmm. top to bottom that ever won a Super Bowl. But, you know, it's hard to argue against the Bears because that defense was phenomenal. They were, and Ron Rivera was a part of that team back yep. then, too. Yep, and, and we're just yeah. talking about one season, not not a team over, yeah. you know, uh, Not like you know, the Packers or that one, one year the Jets you won pick it. one team yeah. out of one season. Who would right. you pick? Yeah. Mine is the 84-49ers. Okay, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there probably saying, as opposed to the 89-49ers, there was one of those Steeler teams that would be the ultimate team that won the Super Bowl, you know, back in the 70s. But having said that, Dave, you were talking about what would be the coolest ending to this game, okay, which would make for a movie, but chances are it wouldn't happen. And it takes me back to 85 when they gave the ball to uh, Refrigerator Perry, and he bowled over a couple of guys to score in the end zone to sort of like, Not to put an exclamation point on that game, because I don't remember exactly what the scoring was, but to give a big man a ball, if they were to give the ball to Michael Orr, the guy that was, well, they did a story about him in Blindside, the motion picture, Mm -hmm. I think that would be the freaking capper. Oh, it certainly (laughs) would. You know what I'm saying? To this Super Bowl. I mean, uh, that movie... (laughs) Uh, you talk about uh, really being able to root for a guy. Mm. And even though he was with the uh, Baltimore Ravens At the time, right, for an extended right. period, uh, it yeah. was like I, I still always had a soft spot for him yeah. because of the movie. And, uh, and you know, it's, and I uh, talked it's about quite that, the yeah. story, and that would be quite quite an ending to a, an oh, amazing man. story for Michael. Yeah, and, Ma- and Thelma and I talked about that yesterday. She said, what do you think is the most inspirational movie? That you would show a child, and we we were talking about. Uh, Remember the Titans would be one of them. Um, Rudy was another one that she brought up, and her pick was Blindside with Michael Orr. Just the inspiration from that movie. So just tying that into the Super Bowl. By the way, I'll give you my prediction. I again, I might have said last week I like Carolina, and I'm going to probably take Carolina by 14. I don't know what the final score will be, but we'll find out coming up on the 50th Super Bowl on Sunday. Enjoy that because we'll talk about it next Monday night here on Monday Night Sports Talk. It's Greg Banks in the studio. Dave Shannon, by the way, in Altoona. Chad States in um, Huntington. Let me ask you guys this real quick. Pro Bowl, did you watch it? Did you care? Uh, Chad, you first and then Dave. Didn't watch it, which means I didn't care. Didn't care, yeah. And what do you think, Dave, they ought to do with this game every year? Because first of all, the Super Bowl teams aren't involved in it. What do they do to make this thing happen? Because a lot of guys bailed out and didn't even want to take that free trip to Hawaii, man. I, I don't know that it's worth salvaging anymore. Yeah. Uh, because it, it, it really doesn't do it. Man, it's a nice idea, and it is another game. But, you right. know, I consider myself a football fan. Lord knows if you check the log of the hours on TV <laughs> that I spent watching it. Yeah. However, that being said, uh, it's, it's something I didn't see it either. And I didn't care. Well, you I know, tuned so in for a couple of minutes. You if know. I'm a football fan yeah. and that's my attitude, maybe it's time for that game to just go away. I mean, you can do your all pro, uh, you know, selections right. every season, yeah. but I don't think you have to play the game because it has no meaning at all. Well, I'm going to ask you this in a couple of minutes. Do you think, you know, like yesterday they had the NHL, um, all-star game on. I, I don't know. You can talk to this, Dave, or speak to this. Uh, the ratings, like the Pro Bowl, probably weren't fan fabulous. 
But having well, said that, they were on a cable network too. Yeah, exactly. But having said that, let's go back to Major League Baseball. Okay, is there still a need for Major League Baseball All Star Game? And I'll ask you, and then I'll ask Chad. I still like the All Star Game. I I don't know that they have to. I kind of feel bad uh, for the the team that uh, just puts out an outstanding record during the course of the season and you gain no advantage right to right. that if you do make it to the world series and you're not going to get home field because they played an all-star game that took that, that away determined from you. it right yeah yeah and i i don't like that aspect of it mm -hmm. now what hockey did uh just to throw this in as a as a mix to this right what they did with that was they paid the winning team a million dollars yeah i saw that okay yeah, so yeah, you had yeah. 11 guys on the roster, you yeah. had nine because they went to the three-on-three -three format, right? And uh, two goalies uh, for for each of those teams. So you mm -hmm. had eleven guys split in a million bucks, right? And uh, probably in the grand scheme of things, for those guys, uh, when you're at an all-star level in the NHL, you're making a lot more than that. But whatever the case, uh, it did seem to make a difference there in the way they played. And uh, so I, I don't know if you, you know, maybe you pay the guys something. Yeah. I don't know. You're making some money off of it because television has sponsors and, you know, you have some sponsors at the stadium. And, you know, a trip to Hawaii is just not that important anymore because, uh, face it, any of those guys that are Pro Bowl status players yeah. can hop on a plane and go to Hawaii anytime they want. Well, this was certainly like All-Star Weekend. Senior Bowl was on Saturday. Chad... Uh, senior Bowl and their significance for college players who might be entering the draft. Uh, is that a spectator sport or is that just for the scouts? I mean, you well, know. I mean, I mean, it's mainly for the scouts. Yeah. I, I mean, you can't. It's hard to watch a football game when teams aren't really teams. Yeah. You know, they're, they're just, you know, kind of going through the motions. They get a quick game plan and, you know, a week and then all of a sudden they're thrown out there. So you're more looking at skill, what a, what a player does in certain situations. But, you need that because these guys need to go out and try and prove themselves. Okay. You know, they're trying to get a job. It's, right. You know, that's part of their interview process. Yeah. So I see some validity in that. Uh, as far as the NFL goes, they need to junk it. I yeah. mean, it's a terrible game. It's a game you can't play right because you can't play at full speed. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, actually, baseball is the only one, if you think about it, yeah. baseball is the only one where you actually legitimately could play it correctly. Because, yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, 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 because yeah. of of the the threat of injury, is is there even in the NBA? I mean, yeah. let's face it, that's even a bigger joke. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's you know, true that's too. just hey, we won't play any defense. Just start shooting for crying out loud. <laughs> wait, the NHL, wait, the NHL, wait, the NHL, they started <laughs> playing defense in the, in yeah, the NBA. Really, well, happen? Dave, hey, come on, Dave. Now, yesterday yep. I was watching those hockey games. Some of them, and they were scoring to high heaven, man. I mean, yep. that three on three, you got three guys against one guy. What I mean, was the score of the was, last game? What was the score of the championship game? I don't even break? remember. It was one to nothing. That one was so one. So don't give me that. <laughs> that don't give one. me that. They were okay. still playing three on three. Yeah. And I think a little bit of that came down to the, shoot, I'm playing for a million bucks. Well, here. yeah, it's true. That money is an incentive in any game. And just like I thought with the Pro Bowl, hey, the incentive is take your family over Hawaii for a week. Is but that you can not do enough for an want to. Those well, guys could, you know, do a charter jet. Yeah, they could. You know? but somebody's paying for it, Dave. You know what I'm saying? So that's geez. enough incentive for me. Okay, listen. Let me ask you this. Hall of Fame, and I got to get this in. Terrell Owens. <laughs> His name comes up to nominate him for the Hall of Fame. I guess he's, he's about due five years after his career. It's been maybe longer. Uh, but then there's some controversy where Mike Martz or somebody says he doesn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame on the first vote. Let me ask Chad and then Dave. I mean, here we have the Hall of Fame. Is his name one of the names that you would select if he's eligible for the Hall of Fame in football? That's a great question, and it's not an easy one because of the personality that comes along. See, with, that's where I'm saying, uh, yeah, you know. But but if you look at it pure numbers wise, mm -hmm. and as an impact, you know, can you rewrite the history of pro football when he played without mentioning his name? Right. No. I don't no, think you can. can't because no. he. I mean, he was an integral part of the teams that he was in, including making a great catch against the Packers in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know, from from Steve Young. Terrell Owens was a very special wide receiver. Yeah. Um, and, and you remember there was a bit, a lot of hubbub 
about him whenever he was playing with Philadelphia yeah. and that broken ankle going into that Super Bowl that had he had been healthy, yeah. he would have been a difference maker in that Super Bowl. So right. to me, from a player standpoint, mm -hmm. I don't know how you cannot consider him. Now, the flamboyance comes into play. Right. And, 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 you know, and everything that Terrell Owens brings with him. But yeah. let's not forget, guys, these are entertainers. Yeah, yeah. It, that's the, true. It, it, at the end of the day, these guys are getting paid to entertain us and how and, and, and Greg or Dave, can you tell me that you weren't entertained by Terrell Owens at some point in your life? So every time yeah, I, I turn on consideration, every time I turn on professional sports, that's what I'm really looking for uh, from a value standpoint. I want to be entertained. I mean, I want to be able to forget about what's happening in the real world. Dave, do you agree with that? I mean, uh, especially after nine 11, what could have happened that was better than that Yankees game a week after 9-11 occurred to get us, you know, thinking maybe relaxing a little bit. I mean, uh, that's that what sports life, is. In that case, that life can return to normal. Exactly. exactly. Because life was anything but normal Yeah. Uh, during the course of that week. Uh, one of the most emotional weeks uh, that I ever went through in my life. Any of and, us. And I uh, hope I never have to go through again. Yeah. <clears throat> that now, being said. Yeah, I don't uh, want to equate it Terrell Jones with that. You know what I'm saying? Terrell Owens. Terrell yeah. Owens, I'm sorry. But, yeah. uh, but you understand uh, what I'm saying. T.O., yeah. T uh, you know, I think uh, Chad made a uh, point there about not being able to rewrite NFL history without him during the period that he was there. Right. And part of that is his flamboyance. So to dismiss a guy because of his flamboyance is oh. kind of silly yeah. because that's why he was in the you know forefront of everyone's mind. Yeah. You know, everyone walked around and talked about T.O. Yeah. You yeah. know, it was T.O. this and T.O. that. And you know what? Terrell Owens uh, got involved with the uh, professional bowlers tour yeah. here a couple of years back. Okay. And uh, is an avid bowler. So, you know, and he it showed a different side of T.O., from what you were used to seeing as far as the football side of it goes and uh, got to know him a little bit more and saw his, you know, everybody changes, you know, you, you mature yeah. at different rates and yeah. uh, you know, he was definitely a lot more mature when he was doing this stuff with the pro bowlers association yeah. as opposed to when he was, you know, in the, in the football game, everybody matures. Chad, by the way, Dave loves the bowl. And we'll talk about that some night uh, as well, because there's some really great bowlers that I remember as a kid uh, when bowling was on television, almost every weekend, like wrestling was, but having said that, let's, uh, Hurry up and kind of wrap this up on Monday Night Sports Talk tonight. Dave Shannon live in Altoona. We have Chad States in Huntington. Dave, the Penguins now, we go back to skating starting later this week. It's like tomorrow. You, okay, so what do you think the rest of the season is going to look like? Because they had a little bit of momentum going into that All-Star break. Oh, I think they'll they'll still have it coming out of the All Star break. Yeah, um, you know, there's a couple of players. Uh, was just reading before we went on the air that uh, Chris Kunitz is going to be a game day decision tomorrow. Yeah, uh, would appear as though Bo Bennett's going to be out for a more extended period. He was back for a game and now he's gone again. Yeah, uh, I think that points out one thing about Bo Bennett. He needs to gain weight. Hmm. Uh, you know, so uh, but in, in the end, I saw a renewed Crosby starting to play the yeah. way he used to play. Right. Malkin's off the charts. And when you look at the Penguins and you look at, uh, and I can't believe the idiots, the absolute freaking idiots mm -hmm. that are out there saying that they should do something with Phil Kessel, mm. that they should get rid of Phil Kessel. I was just watching a thing on NHL Network. He won the speed yeah. skating competition, uh, you know, at a couple of all-star games, at yeah. least one. And it's like, no, you don't get rid of Phil Kessel because you have him and Malkin and now Heglin, who's also Oh, man, Heglin's coming on. Yeah, they're yeah, loving him. And it's like that, to me, may end up being the most formidable line in hockey once they get to know each other. I mean, the, no doubt. you know, Heglin's had a, just a couple of games so far. Right. And Phil Kessel, I think, has had a, a difficulty adjusting to who the hell is the other guy on our line. Yeah. And I think you're going to see, as long as there's no injuries, you're going to see Kessel, Malkin, and Heglin together. Uh, for the remainder of the season, and I think that is going to be a deadly line. I think the uh, Penguins, 
no one's going to catch the Capitals yeah, that I yeah. can see. Right. I mean, they're just outstanding. So the Caps walk away at the top of the Eastern Conference. But I think the Penguins, uh, you know, uh, they put put together like a seven-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. They're going to start to be talked about in the upper echelon because, quite frankly, they're only a couple of points behind the Islanders now and would not even have to be worrying about a wild card entry into the NHL playoffs. So, you know, the idiots that keep going out there, every night's so <laughs> important, we have to win every game. No, you don't. No. No, you don't. Just but I will say this. Yeah. If they put seven in a row together or something like that, I mean, the team, uh, I think, has uh, has an unlimited ceiling at this point. I mean, the, the best we can look for right now, and I don't mean to cut you off, Chad, is wild card anyhow. I mean, at this yeah, point. Yeah, and I mean, I'm going to ask Dave this. You, you don't want to get stuck being the eighth seed, right? Because Washington You're going to play is, the Caps. You're going to oh, play yeah, the Caps. And, yeah. and are they beatable? At this point in time, you know, and I'm, I'm you know, I, I start to – gravitate towards hockey a little bit now yeah. because it starts to get into the the games that really start to mean stuff and build up for the playoffs. and but after football it, it, too is, yeah, yeah it's exactly right um i'm basically saying there's nothing on tv day so i'm watching <laughs> hockey um, but but are the caps beatable in a series because well, it doesn't look like they are i don't think they are in a series at this point mm -hmm. now right. i haven't seen a team that you know uh for example the last game that i saw the caps was against the flyers and the flyers beat them in overtime uh, so who, you know, who sees that coming, right? Yeah. Uh, bottom line is there, there is a way to beat them. It's primarily with uh, good defense and uh, trying to, you know, keep, uh, well, basically not losing the puck in the neutral zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to see what the Penguins look like. Let, I'll, I'll, let me address that. We'll talk the, about it next uh, week. At the end of uh, February, simply right. because I think that's going to be the Penguins team that you see going forward. It's going to take yeah. another month yet. Right. But I, like I said, I that Hagelin, Malkin, Kessel. I'm loving that too, just, Dave. I'm ooh. loving that too. Yeah. And you know what? We'll talk more about Penguins and also take a look at the Pirates again next week on Monday Night Sports Talk. Hey, Chad, before we go, Penn State Wrestling taking on Michigan over the weekend, 35 to 7. And the house was packed over at BJC, I believe it was, or was it Rec Hall? Where, where did you get to the uh, match over the weekend at all? No, no, they they were they wrestled at Rec Hall. Okay, um, they I were did Rec not Hall. Get to the match, but I listened to it on the radio. And yeah, it was every bit the destruction you just said. Oh, they are that good. Yeah. You know, I mean, is there anything that might? Just, I mean, short of like everybody getting injured. That keeps him away from the national championship this I, year. I don't think so in a tournament wise. I, I, this weekend, Penn State will wrestle um, Ohio State oh, at home. Man. Ohio State poses a little bit of a challenge because there are some matchups that could go either way. That you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that Penn State's going to lose, but it's going to be a very, very tough match uh, for them this Friday. But in a tournament. Penn State's untouchable right now. All right. I, is that one going to be on Big Ten Network, Chad? It will be on the oh, Big Ten man, Network. Oh, man, I would hope okay. so. I'll, I'll, wave, yeah. I'll wave to you guys from my seats. I'm sure you'll see me with <laughs> yeah. 17,000 other people. Yeah, there, that's so. a BJC yeah. event, so that's going to be great. Hey, well, you know how yep. you get seen. Just put a uh, sign up that says, Monday Night Sports Talk. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, thank you, Chad Stace from Huntington and Dave Shannon from uh, – Altoona. Hey, I hope that your team wins on Sunday, guys. Yeah. Don't drink too much beer or uh, whatever you do, like, on Super Bowl Sunday. Chad, does your wife watch the Super Bowl, too, or does she, like, have a little side party of crochet and stuff? I don't no, know. No, no, no. She'll, she'll watch it probably for about 10, 15 minutes, and then she'll be with the four-year-old. So. All right. Hey, well, if nothing else, man, this could be a blowout, and I'll look forward to seeing some of the new commercials, and we'll talk about it next Monday. How's that sound? All right. All right. That wraps up another edition of Monday Night Sports Talk here on the Air Network. And I am Greg Banks. For Dave Shannon, Chad States, have a great one and enjoy that Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl 50.